Family, uh, the Lord has put a few things on my heart today. One of them is I, I need a little drink of water. But in all honesty and sincerity and seriousness, there's always things that are on my heart. And the heart is the wellspring of who I am, right? And the heart is the wellspring of who you are. And we want to be sincere and we want to, we want to be transparent. We want, to, we want to share from that space, from that place, really, if you would. That's, that's who we want to be as people. And um, there's some things that I'm concerned about as a pastor. One of them is that many are calling themselves believers, Christians, and they don't track with the church. That's scary for me because I think it's scary for them. And I don't know if you're listening in online or here in person, but to be consistently tracking with a church is very important for you because you're going to go through a lot of things in your life that are not going to be easy. And when you need your people the most, they won't be there because you removed yourself from them. I want to tell you that first and foremost. Don't remove yourself from your community. Community is so important. The, the Bible even goes so far as to say, don't forsake the gathering as some have done. Don't forsake it. And so we love to pick and choose what we want to adhere to in the Scriptures, don't we? Come on, we're human beings. I like this part of Scripture, but I don't like this because it doesn't fit my lifestyle. It doesn't fit where I'm at in life today. But I'm a little bit nervous and scared for those that pull themselves away from the body of believers. I would say this to you if you're listening in online or here in person. Move yourself toward the body of believers. Be a part of things. Hey, I'm so excited that we can do things this fall season that actually help you as a person do more than just come for a Sunday service. And I think Sunday services are vitally important. The early church gathered together and they worshiped God collectively and they did many things when they came together. They took communion together. They prayed together. They had fellowship together. They ate together. They edified each other in that body of believers. And many would come feeling a little distraught, I'm sure. Many would come feeling the, the temptation of the devil not to go and be a part of that gathering. But when they left, nine times out of ten, maybe even ten out of ten, depending, they would leave better than when they first came. And that's our motto here at New Life Community Church. May you always leave better than when you first came. And that motto doesn't just cover a Sunday service. That motto covers whenever we gather, wherever that gathering is, whether it's in a house or, or whether it's out at the, the coffee shop, may you always leave better because you met with one of us and we are family. We are family. I hope that that is what happens. You know, we've even put things in place, as I said, so that you might be able to grow. And we've collaborated with others in, in, in trying to find ways to grow. And I think today, and I'm going to just put them on the spot, and they just love it, Cal and Shay. I know that you're busy there. Um, but just, I want to grab your attention because I'm so proud of them. I'm proud that we can collaborate with Couch Church and that we can collaborate with Woman at the Well. Cal, if you would just stand up, I'm going to put you on the spot. Cal is going to, to, to start a men's breakfast Tuesdays at Smitty's in Spruce Grove, and that's at 8 o'clock in the morning in the lounge side. And so he's reserved that. So, so men, if you're, if, if you're a veil, if, you're, if, if you have the ability to be there, don't Walk through life alone, 8 a.m., Smitty, Spruce Grove, in the lounge. And you're going to find fellowship for an hour, hour and a half. And so hopefully that just gets you and keeps you going. It keeps you going. Uh, Shay, I'm going to put you on the spot. Shay, Shay's been teaching me some lessons here. And so we try and meet regularly to encourage and to edify each other. And so Shay has been doing a segment called Monday Moment at the Well for like two years now. And so she, she launches that on her WhatsApp uh, page, and, uh, which is social media, and Facebook. And so she encouraged me to start what I've called a break in your day. And so a break in your day is going to come to you on Wednesdays. 
And so, like me on Facebook, here I am saying that, I can't believe I just said like me on Facebook. I must be like 15 years behind the world, honestly, right? But I'm learning new tricks, uh, new tricks. All dogs can learn new tricks, right? I'm trying to, 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 to reach, but I want to reach you. I want to reach you. I want to reach your hearts. So go on Facebook, hopefully not every Wednesday, but many Wednesdays, you'll see me. And like Shay on Facebook, because not every Monday, but her is most Mondays, Monday Moment at the Well. You want to be encouraged. These are ways in which they're two to three minute segments so that you might be able to say, hey, I got some daily bread today from somebody that I know, from somebody that I know. We get our daily bread from so many people that are in the U.S. or they're in Europe or they're somewhere. We don't know them. But take your daily bread from people that you know who are bringing it to you from the Lord. All right? These are things to encourage you so that you don't isolate yourselves, so that you don't start to separate yourself from the, from the gathering. But don't make that the gathering, all right? All right? Don't make that the substitute for gathering. I want to see this church filled. I want to see it filled. And I've been here eight years, and I'm very disappointed. Lord, why is this church not filled? Is there something wrong with me? Is there something wrong with me as a leader? I'll be honest with you. We're talking about the mind today, and this is how God gets working with us, but this is how the devil gets deceiving us. Am I a bad leader? That's what I think I am. So your participation is reflective. It really is. But it's reflective as well on whether or not you're actually listening to the Word of God. The Lord says don't forsake the gathering, but there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not a million or two, Christians around the world that forsake the gathering. Why is that? Is that because it's the pastor's fault in those local congregations? Have they not done a good job shepherding, bringing you together? We all are individuals, even though we're part of a corporate body, right? We all are individuals, and we all have a will. And many of our wills say, I don't want, I don't need, I don't desire. This is a battlefield in the mind. This is a battlefield in the mind. Come on. And who is, who is there toying with your thoughts? It's the devil. I want to take us today. Worship God with a renewed mind. We're becoming a, a praying people. We're be, becoming a praying church. We're becoming a praying person. And in order for us to remain in a posture of prayer, we have to renew our mind. And our mind cannot be renewed if we are not people who pray, praying people. We have to be in communion with God constantly in order for our minds to be renewed. Romans 12, 1 to 8 is where I'm taking us today. So as you look for that, I'll take a little drink here again. Romans 12, 1 to 2 is where we're going to start. Lord Jesus was talking through the Apostle Paul. Don't ever think that this was just Paul himself. The Holy Spirit was working in him. The Holy Spirit was working in him. I'll back us up to Romans eleven thirty three, 33, and then I'll get us to, to chapter 12. There was a doxology. And Paul said, Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay him? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Oh, it's beautiful. And Paul goes on in chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, and he says, Therefore, because of all of this, of who God is, 
He says because of, of his vastness and his grandness and his majestic being and, and, and his almighty power and because he's creator and we are the created and because he has saved us and redeemed us and blessed us rather than cursed us, because of all these things and more, he says, I urge you. I urge you. I get your attention, he says. I need your attention. I'm urging you. Brothers and sisters, in view of all of this, and in view of this as well, God's mercy over your life. Oh, he's been merciful. He says, because of this, would you offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God? Would you do that? Would you offer your bodies as living sacrifices? Not like they did in the ancient days where they would bring animal sacrifices and they would burn them. He's not asking us to do that. He's not asking us to do like the pagans did, the godless. That pagan is just a word for the godless, right? Not like they were doing. They were sacrificing children to these idols, killing them. No, no, he says, not like that. But your body is a temple. Because in the New Testament, our body has become the temple. Not, it's, it's, in some ways, the church, if you would. And our wellspring is the sanctuary that houses Almighty God. He came into you and His Holy Spirit entered into you. So our, our body is the temple. He says, would you offer that body of yours? Your hands and your feet and your mouthpiece, your back and your stomach and your ears and your tongue and your eyes and your feet and, and your toes and your toenails and your fingernails and your fingerprints. And would you offer all of that and more, all of your being, your body, your soul, your spirit? Would you offer that to God? Would you give it to him? See, when you surrendered your spirit, remember you did that when you came to life in Christ? You were new in Jesus. Your body lagged behind because your body's being commanded by the soul. And the soul is what part of you? It's the way you think. It's the way you feel, your emotions. It's your conscience. It's your will. And many of us were strong-willed children. Our parents told us that, and they said, oh, man, that one's going to be tough. We have a strong will, but the will needs to be broken. So we gave up our spirit to God, and he's, he called us out of the world, and he called us into him, into a life with Jesus Christ. And now he's renewing that soul of ours. And the soul commands the body. And he says, won't you offer that up to me? Won't you give me all of you? Is what he's saying. Not just your spirit, but all of you. And this is what Paul is saying in light of who God is. And in order to do that, verse 2 is very applicable. It says this. Don't conform any longer to the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when you do that, you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will for you. Oh, the mind is a battlefield. So we're at the game last night. Started at 5, ended at around 8. It was hot, sweaty hot. I'm in shorts, but I've, I've, I've got to wear my... My green and gold, I just have to, right? You know, I, I pay homage to my team, sort of, you know, by, and, and respectfully by wearing my green and gold jersey. And there we are in about the fourth quarter, and it's great. We're just blasting the Stampeders. I love, I'm just loving it. I don't know if you're a Stampeders fan here or not, but uh, this is our year finally. Well, we lost seven in a row. Don't we? We're not going to the Grey Cup, trust me. <laughs> We won five games this year. That's more wins than the last four years. So it's a victory, okay? I'm just going to say that. But there we are. We're moving into the fourth quarter, and we're just enjoying it. We're getting up. We're high-fiving everybody. We're having a great time. And I get an onslaught of thought right there, an onslaught of bad thought toward people. 
What I want you to know is this, is that the enemy is crafty. The enemy is not our friend. And you can be even at Commonwealth Stadium enjoying yourself, and he'll come after you. He'll come after you because the gathering is today. He came after me. I didn't have my cell phone with me. I couldn't text anybody and say, hey, I don't know what I'm experiencing right now, but I'm starting to feel real bad about people. Real bad about people. And where does that come from? It's the enemy. So I had Tammy, and she was with me. Not at the game, but I waited till we got out of, the, out of the game and into the car. And I said, Tammy, I'm having a tough time here. I am under some real spiritual attack. How do you know it's spiritual attack? When what you're thinking is going contrary to the Word of God, you know you're under attack. And when someone prays for you, in 10 minutes, it was gone. It was gone, and my thinking was renewed. When we go through moments like that, friends, we've got to turn to each other, and this is why it is so important that we don't withdraw from the community of believers because we need each other. We need each other to get through these tough times. The enemy does not play fair. He does not play fair. And if you think you can run from his attacks by going and having pleasure somewhere, it's not going to work. He'll get you there too. He will. Our only way out is to take our thoughts captive. And we need prayer warriors that will help us. We need to reach out to them and say, I'm having a bad hour, a bad moment. Pray for me. Pray for me. Sometimes it just happens like that in our lives where you're just out having a good time and you get an onslaught of bad thought, okay? Sometimes things happen in our lives where we get triggered, where we get triggered. There's things that someone says or, or a person that we've had an upset with once before all of a sudden comes into our, 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 our eyesight and we're triggered. Even in those moments, we have to act the same way. Is what I'm feeling going contrary to the Word of God? And if it is... We know we're under attack. We know we're under attack. We know that's the enemy coming at us. And we need to be able to identify that more and more in our lives. The Bible says that we are not to conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And the only way that our minds can be renewed is if we have people praying for us, we take those thoughts captive, and we start to overcome in those negative things. Two questions. Two questions we need to ask ourselves. Because this is all about worship. This is all our act of worship. Two questions. Number one, as I live my life, am I worshiping God with a conscious reality that the Holy Spirit is working within me? How do we know if the Holy Spirit is actually working within us? We're all saying, what, don't you feel him? Don't you sense his presence? And there will be some people who will say, oh, absolutely I do. I just know without a shadow of a doubt, I can feel God in me. And others will say, no, I've got a totally different experience going on. I don't feel him like that. I don't, I don't sense his presence like that. So how do we know if the Holy Spirit is working within us? Our mind will tell us. Are we listening to the conviction Are we listening to the conviction of the Holy Spirit? In other words, if you're doing something immoral, don't you think that the Holy Spirit would then give you a sense within you to say, hmm, you might want to reconsider that lifestyle choice or that thing that you're doing? I think that that should be standard across the board. The conviction of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us it is the role of the Holy Spirit to convict us. And to convict doesn't always mean that we're in a place of sin. All right? To convict means that he needs to help us change the course of our actions so that we are in line with God's will. And that's what he is saying here. 
is that we need to, 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 to give our bodies as a living sacrifice so that we can be in the will of God, which means that we need to hear God, and we hear him through conviction. So if I am hearing the Holy Spirit, am I listening to the Spirit's voice? I could have gone all night entertaining those bad thoughts. I could. And many of us do. All night long. Tormenting. You've been there, right? Tormenting thoughts. Why am I thinking so poorly of this person? Why haven't I forgiven this person when I said I did? Why am I still thinking about this thing from 30 years ago? These are all tormenting thoughts. We have a choice. We can entertain those things. We've heard the conviction of the Holy Spirit, but we did nothing with it. So what we do in that moment, if we don't listen to the Holy Spirit, is we sear our conscience. And it becomes harder and harder and harder to hear the conviction of the Holy Spirit. We don't want to sear that conscience. We want to listen. Secondly, am I worshiping God in all that I do today? Have I truly given my body? Have I truly given my soul? Have I truly given my spirit to God? And if I have, then why does self so often take center stage? Why is it about me so often? I shared with you another transparent moment. As a pastor, did you hear my insecurities? You heard them. I'm telling you today as a human being, I'm insecure as, I am insecure as much as you are insecure. Insecurities affect all of us. We all seem to need affirmation, right? Absolutely, because we're human. Because we're human and we're affected by the sinful nature. A pastor's not superhuman, all right? A pastor is just as human as you. It just so happens that I have a call on my life to lead you as a pastor. That doesn't mean that I'm better than you. That doesn't mean that I'm higher than you. That means I am just as affected by sin as you, but we can all overcome the sinful nature together. Together, but we need each other. We need each other in that. We need to practice our faith together. We need to be a church that prays together. So you've heard that saying, a per church that prays together stays together. Love it. Say it again. A church that prays together stays together. Amen. I hope you heard that online. Jesus continues to speak through the Apostle Paul. Verse 3 to 5 of Romans chapter 12 he says, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, now listen carefully to this, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. Man, we get thinking highly of ourselves when we aren't transparent with people. When we think that we can cover up the fact that we need affirmation, the fact that we have insecurities, the fact that we have struggles like everybody else. If I'm here making it sound like I've got it all together, which you're not hearing today, that's where pride comes. That's where arrogance enters in. I'm better than you is what we think. He says, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. But rather, would you think of yourself with sober judgment? in accordance with the measure of faith that God has given you, just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. It's very powerful what Paul is saying there. What he's helping us to understand is this, is that we need to listen to God's voice. And in order to do so, it's going to take all of your will. All of your will. As stubborn as the will wants to be, it's going to take all of your will to be broken before God. To do as God is asking you to do in your life. It's going to take all of your conscience. All of your conscience. Every conscious thought 
brought to God. It's going to have to take every emotion, every feeling that you have. And someone tell me different, man, our feelings run away on us, don't they? Absolutely they do. Why do we always want to feel happy? Why do we always want to feel bliss? Who promised us that? Did God promise us that, truly? Who promised us that? If we believe that someone sold us a bill of goods, that isn't true. What God truly promised is this. You will have moments of happiness, yes. Moments of bliss, absolutely. Man, I remember when our, our, our granddaughter was born here not long ago. There's no better feeling, right? You will have moments like that. But we don't stay in those moments all the time. We don't. You know, when we think about marriages even, you know, or, or, or new relationships with people, wow, there's always this beautiful honeymoon stage that just seems like, wow, this is wonderful. It's blessed. It's beautiful. Nothing can go wrong. But we don't stay there forever. What God promises is he will be with us always, especially when it doesn't stay the way we hoped it would. He would be with us. I wish that I could always be happy. I wish I was always at Commonwealth and that we're always winning. That, 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 that's my natural default. I, I want to be hedonistic. I want to be pleasure-seeking. I want to be, um, you know, I, I just want to be that. It's all about pleasure. It's all about me. If I could be a narcissist, I would want to be one. You know? Like, that's the default. Let's make this about me. But we can't. Because there's more than just me at stake here. There's all of us. And we all think that we got big problems, eh? Just think about this for a minute. We do have problems. We all, we all do. We all have struggles. But we're not the only one in this world that has struggles. When you're going through your struggles, would you reach out to somebody so that you're not struggling alone? Would you do that? Could I ask you to promise me that? Could you like me on Facebook? <laughs> could you like Shay on Facebook? Could you, could you do that? And a few others that have Facebook pages? Like, I, yeah, I, I mean, I've had a Facebook page since 2007, but technically it just came to life in 2024. <laughs> I'm a very slow changer. I really am. It takes me a while to really adjust. And I know that some of you are probably like me in that. For example, Tammy will buy me these beautiful clothes and they'll sit in my closet for two years. And then I'll take them out and I'll be like, yeah, I really like this. But it takes me that long to get used to it. It just does. It's the renewing of the mind. Listening to God's voice, doing what he's asking us to do. It's going to take all our will, all our conscious being, every emotion, in every part of our mind. But we need to become strong as people because there's some serious, serious times that are coming. They're coming. And I'm preparing you for that. He goes on finally with this, and he says, I love this. Romans 12, 6 to 8, and we'll close with this, and we'll go eat a little something. How's that sound? Yeah. Who said good? <laughs> Isn't this feeding you? <laughs> I love you. I won't, hold, I won't hold that against you. But save me a hot dog, would you? Chapter 12, Romans, verse 6 to 8. This is how beautiful it is. This is the gathering of God's people. We have all got different gifts. Every one of us. If you stay away from us, you cannot bless us. Okay? We're missing out. And I'll tell you right now, that bugs me. It bugs me. And I'll, 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 I'll show a little concern here. I can't do it all. And you can't do it all. But if we all gather together, we can do a lot. 
But if you're expecting a couple, three to do stuff around here, well, you're going to burn them out and we're not going to have a church. That's what's going to happen. And we lose pastors every day because they burn out. And we lose people every day from different positions because they burn out. We need to have a spirit in us that says, I am willing to use the gifts that God has given me to build you up. And that's what Paul is saying here. He is saying we've all got different gifts. The Holy Spirit has given us that. And when we die to ourselves, when we die to ourselves in our narcissistic ways, that's really what he's saying in today's terms. When we die to all that and let Jesus come forward and we step back, the church changes. And it grows. And it thrives. And people all of a sudden get vision from God to go on missions and do things in their community and to make a difference in life. We all have different gifts according to the grace that was given us. So if a man's gift is to prophesy, should we hold him back? No. The Bible says this, then let him use it in proportion to his faith. Let him prophesy. Don't hold him back. But here's the thing about prophetic voices today, and this is just my observation. Very rare do I actually hear a prophetic voice. Where what I hear mostly is encouragement. And that's good too. That's good too. But a prophetic voice, we really need to be hearing from God as to what that is. It is there, but it's rare. Verse 7, if it's serving, if you've been called to serve, then wash some dishes, stack some chairs, put out some tables, have people in your home, take them out, bless them, do this. Don't sit idle in your homes doing nothing because you will rot away and your gifts with you. Use them to edify each other, he says. Use them. Use them. So if it's serving, let them serve. If it's teaching, my goodness, there's got to be more than just me as teachers here. There's plenty of teachers in this room. Teach. Teach. Men and women, teach. Let them teach. If it's to encourage, if you've got that Barnabas spirit about you, you better be encouraging others because we're living in times today where people really need their, their flat tires inflated. All right? Be an encourager. Don't discourage others. See the potential in them and encourage them. Encourage them. If it's to contribute to the needs of others, if you've got some money in your pocket, use it. Use it. To do what? To build God's kingdom here on earth. You will have some pleasure with your money. We go to the football games, we get seasons tickets. We, we, we disperse some of that for ourselves. That's fine. But don't let that be the heartbeat of who you are. Let the majority of what you do build God's kingdom. Give to his mission. Give to people who are saying that they need to help others. Use your, your, your money that God has lent you. I know you think you earned it. You had a lot of help in earning it. I know I think I earned it, but we had a lot of help in earning it. We steward what God gives us. Are you a good steward of what God has given you? Don't hoard it. Use it. So contribute to the needs of others when they tell you they have needs. You know, yesterday we went through the drive through at Dairy Queen. I'll just say this because I want to whet your appetite for these hot dogs. <laughs> got a blizzard, and you'll hear my segment on Wednesday about blizzards again. <laughs> I don't know, I'm infatuated with ice cream, sorry, and peanut butter. <laughs> I wanted to help this person, but he was so inebriated, you know what I mean by that? He was drunk, stoned. And I rolled up my window as he walked by. You ever been there? Because I didn't want to contribute to his addiction. And he was in no 
frame of mind to hear any words of reason. I guarantee you that. There's things in this world that just disturb me. That person doesn't disturb me. It's how the devil got into him that does. Have compassion for the person. You hear what I'm saying? Have compassion for the person. <clears throat> give generously. I couldn't give that day. We have money to give. But that would have been the wrong way to give. If it's leadership, then let him be given to it diligently. If you have an ability to lead, we need you. Even if you don't have an ability to lead, we need you. If it is showing mercy, then let him do it cheerfully. Mercy. God has done nothing but show us mercy. Might we do the same to others. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in prayer, learning how to be living sacrifices. Hmm. Learning how to be praying people, a praying person. Learning how to renew our mind. Lord, this life, it just becomes about us so quick, Lord. Forgive us, forgive us, Lord. Let us live lives that are about others. Give us wisdom to know when to help others. Lord, we know that sometimes it's hard to help. And sometimes people don't even want our help. Father, I pray that you would be with us in all these ebbs and flows of life. Father, as we bring our will, our conscience, our thoughts, and our emotions to you today, we pray that you would renew them as you did our spirit. And may our body be affected by this renewal, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Family, you're going to have a great week ahead of you. All the good things that are put in place just to edify you. Just think about some of the stuff that I mentioned today. God is for you. He is not against you. He loves you. Let's enjoy a nice meal together, all right? God bless you, in Jesus' name.